Good morning. Thank you all for joining me today to learn more about Curve Beam's product line. My name is Vinti Singh. I am the director of marketing for Curve Beam, and today we're uh, very excited and honored to have the opportunity to unveil to you uh, our next uh, innovation and our next foray into extremity imaging. Let me start by just telling you a little bit about Curve Beam. Curve Beam was founded in 2009. Our global headquarters are in Hatfield, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia. We also have a Europe headquarters in London and a branch office in India. Uh, Curve Beam's founder comes from the dental maxillofacial imaging specialty. Uh, he's bringing the, his knowledge and expertise into a new domain, into musculoskeletal and orthopedics. So in a very short amount of time, since 2009, Curve Beam has introduced three products to the market. Uh, all have FDA approvals, CE marking, as well, as well as various other approvals around the globe. In 2012, we introduced the PEDCAT, which is a weight-bearing CT system for the foot and ankle that was followed five years later by the InReach, which is an extremity imaging device specifically for hand, wrist, and elbow. Uh, in 2018, we introduced the lineup, uh, which traveled further up the lower limb, up to the knee. Uh, we now boast more than 100 installations worldwide in every continent except for Africa. And coming up, we have a lot, of, a lot more exciting innovations underway. We are entering the artificial intelligence space and we're going to have AI solutions that complement our imaging. We're also planning on scanning all the way up to the hip, which is what we're here to introduce to you today. And further into the future, we're also working on dynamic imaging, which is going to be the next frontier in extremity imaging. So just an illustration of our global install base our largest concentration is in North America, but we have several installations in Europe as well, Australia, South America, Asia, and that footprint continues to grow. We expect to expand even further in 2020. So I'd like to start by talking a little bit about what is cone beam CT imaging. Cone beam CT imaging is a type of CT imaging, uh, but it utilizes a flat panel detector and a specialized X-ray tube it provides clear images that are high contrast of the osseous structure. So cone beam CT imaging is indicated for trabecular bone imaging. Because we're using a flat panel detector, the acquisition is a volume, and so we're able to reconstruct that into very fine slices, very high resolution, so typically 0.2 to 0.3 millimeter slices. And scan time, because you're only making one revolution around the anatomy, instead of several is very fast, typically 10 to 45 seconds. And because of the nature of the technology, it's truly a point of care solution. It plugs into a standard wall outlet, either a 120 volt or 230 volt. It's like a microwave or a refrigerator. You simply plug it into the wall and it's ready to go. There's no special cooling required for the tube. It's also self-shielded. So you can place it into a room, a medical physicist has to do the evaluation, but in most cases, medical physicists will determine that double drywall is sufficient and you do not need a fully lead-lined room. In the United States, an RTR is qualified to operate cone beam CT imaging equipment in most states. You do not need an RTCT. That truly makes it a point of care solution. You can put it in an orthopedic clinic, a podiatry clinic, multiple specialty offices. Uh, Curve Beam does have installations across the spectrum of imaging care. So from single physician podiatry offices to imaging centers to large hospital departments. So we boast installations at Hospital for Special Surgery, Mayo Clinics Rochester, Mayo Clinic Arizona, Massachusetts General. But I personally am just as proud of our installations in those very small clinics because we have been able to bring advanced diagnostic imaging to the point of care and making it accessible at that first level of diagnosis. So cone beam CT imaging has been applied to a variety of specialties. 
uh, most notably dental maxillofacial, uh, cone beam CT systems have pretty much become the standard of care if you're getting any sort of implant surgery or any sort of complex uh, dental or maxillofacial work. Uh, there are also applications in breast imaging and in orthopedics, which is what Curve Beam uh, specializes in. So I'd like to show you a few examples of some cone beam CT images. As you can see, terrific osseous detail, terrific trabecular structure, and beautiful lifelike 3D renderings. The way to think of cone beam CT, it truly is three-dimensional x-ray. It doesn't it doesn't do much justice to compare to conventional CT. We really have to look at it in comparison to x-ray because that's truly where it's elevating the standard of care and changing the paradigm of care. With the cone beam CT scan, you have improved fracture detection, improved complex fracture detection. It's also much faster to acquire a data set via cone beam CT imaging than traditional x-ray imaging. A x-ray exam, you're having to capture three to seven views, you're repositioning the x-ray tube and the patient. It can take about 15 to 20 minutes, where a CT exam, cone beam CT exam, excuse me, from start to finish, is about four minutes. So there have been studies showing that there is a significant operational time savings if you're using code beam CT for your first line of diagnosis, as opposed to an x-ray exam followed by an optional conventional CT exam. Cone beam CT is also extremely low dose. The dose of a cone beam CT exam is in line with a regular x-ray exam, so there is no significant additional risk to the patient. Our most forward-thinking clinics are actually using cone beam CT as the first uh, diagnostic exam. They're not doing x-ray first, they're going straight to code beam CT and they're getting a much more accurate representation of the anatomy in the first exam. So what is weight-bearing CT imaging? And why is it necessary? When the patient is in weight-bearing, it affects their bone morphology, it affects their alignment, and it affects their joint space. Uh, many of you who work with orthopedic specialists probably know that weight-bearing x-ray is the standard of care for any lower extremity exam. Orthopedic specialists will actually prefer a weight-bearing x-ray over a 3D CT because even though the anatomy is in 3D, if, it, if the patient is supine, you're losing all of that alignment detail. The American Society of Foot and Ankle Surgeons recommends weight-bearing CT imaging when possible to get the most accurate assessment. So the PEDCAT, which we introduced in 2012, which is a foot and ankle specific device, that's the one pictured here, that propelled a whole host of research studies and clinical use cases for weight-bearing CT, specifically for foot and ankle. For example, bunion, hallux valgus, that's a very common uh, pathology that many people uh, have. Weight-bearing CT has revealed that bunions are actually a complex three-dimensional deformity, and we should be using weight-bearing CT to assess them. That's how you can see the rotation of the sesamoids, that's how you can see the rotation of the metatarsals, and how you can see the metatarsals of the transverse plane uh, in relationship to each other. And bunion corrections should really be planned in weight-bearing CT, not x-ray, which is the current standard of care right now. There are several other indications in foot and ankle, including high ankle sprains, midfoot instability, hind foot misalignment, flat foot. The list is quite long. An independent research group was formed a few years ago. Uh, since their inception, there have been more than 80 plus publications in peer reviewed journals discussing the efficacy of weight-bearing CT and revealing new understandings in foot and ankle morphology and pathology. At one point, the Weight-Bearing CT Society claimed that we have more publications than members, which just goes to show that there is so much research potential that Weight-Bearing CT is opening up. And we don't only have installations in clinical settings, we have several installations in biomechanical research labs and in research sections of hospitals, which just goes to show that this is not just a clinical application, there's a significant research application here as well. So the lineup, enables imaging up to the knee in weight-bearing. 
there are several indications and applications in knee as well, including standing CT arthrogram for meniscus evaluation. When you do a standing CT arthrogram, you not only get to see if the meniscus is intact, you're seeing that joint space and if that's affecting meniscal position or tear as well. There's also a lot of research being done to show that monitoring joint space narrowing over time could help us understand the progression of osteoarthritis and may eventually lead to new protocols to intervene earlier when the patient is in the pre-arthritic stage to prevent arthritis later on. A second group has recently formed the OCTA. It's they have organized the first multi-center study to focus on symptomatic knee osteoarthritis and weight-bearing CT is a major component of their efforts and a major component of their study design and how they're going to be understanding osteoarthritis and its evolution in the knee. One of the most exciting potentials for weight-bearing CT is how it can be used in pre-operative planning for joint replacement. Total ankle replacement is the fastest growing joint replacement procedure of all the lower extremity procedures. The CT scan protocol for total ankle replacement requires not only the foot and ankle but also the knee because you need the knee as a reference point. The hour systems, because of their large field of view that allow a patient to stand with both feet side by side, are the only ones that are compatible with the right total ankle replacement system, the Prophecy preoperative navigation system. With a curved beam scan, you're able to scan the patient from the knee to the feet without the patient having to be repositioned between those two extremities so you can get a true alignment scan. Being able to do the preoperative scan at the point of care is already yielding multiple benefits at the initial sites at which this uh, protocol was launched. Uh, we're finding that when the preoperative scans are submitted to the, uh, to the companies, there's improvement in consistency. There are less positioning errors, less uh, acquisition errors. Uh, so there are huge benefits to be able, being able to do that preoperative scan at the point of care. Something else that is recently emerging that there will need to be more research done to validate is that when you do your total ankle replacement preoperative scan on a supine CT, you're able to observe internal rotation of the ankle, but you can't necessarily observe external rotation of the ankle. That is really only visible in the weight-bearing position. And being able to assess if there's any external rotation could have an impact on the surgical plan when the ankle is being in the surgical setting. There was a, a recent study, it was uh, actually just, uh, it was presented at the AOFAS meeting earlier this year and uh, just published. Uh, it shows that weight-bearing CT could be used to establish a safe zone. So when we're talking about ankle alignment and it, the ankle moving in varus position or valgus position, what this study showed is we actually only have a few degrees, a few degrees left, a few degrees right, that we have to work with. And if we're going beyond that safe zone, there is a higher likelihood of a cyst developing around the total ankle replacement site. And what they were able to do is look at feet in which there had been a total ankle replacement. And if the cyst was on the left, it was the result of a misalignment in the varus position. If the cyst was developing more on laterally, it was because of a deviation on the varus position. So actually, the direction of deviation was directly correlated with where the cyst was going to develop. Eventually, once all total ankle replacements are performed at the weight-bearing CT scan, we may be able to make major steps in preventing cysts that result from those operations, um, and those cysts often result in requiring revision surgeries. So if we can prevent that, that will improve patient care across the board. So we work with lots of uh, orthopedic specialists, and uh, as we were uh, talking to more and more specialists, we realized that if we wanted to provide a solution for knee orthopedic surgeons who are performing total knee replacements, 
we were going to also need to provide imaging of the hip because for preoperative CTs for total knee replacements, it usually requires the hip, knee, and ankle. And so we needed to design a system that could travel up the entire lower limb and provide the entire lower limb. There are more than 600,000 knee replacements performed in the U.S. annually. And so if we can provide a better solution for the preoperative plan, we wanted to find a way to do that. So our first generation covered the foot and ankle. Our second generation went up to the knee. And our third generation, the high rise, will go up to the hip and the pelvis. So this illustrates the evolution of our systems. We began development on the high rise earlier this year, and we anticipate FDA approval in 2020. Here are some of the early images that we were able to capture of the hip and pelvis. For total knee replacements, what's required is being able to see where the femoral head sits inside of the acetabulum. So we're very able, we're able to clearly see the bone edges of the acetabulum and the femoral head. And so these will be able to provide the necessary reference points when creating those pre-surgical plans for total knee replacements. The high-rise will have some of the same competitive benefits as our previous system. It's going to offer the largest field of view in its class. The patient is able to stand naturally with both feet side by side. You don't need to do multiple studies to capture both limbs. And we're able to scan up to a size 20 shoe. Several indications are bilateral conditions. It helps to see the other side to know whether that pathology is actually pathology within that patient or if it's just natural anatomic variation of that patient. The high rise is also going to be a true multi-extremity solution. We've designed it so that the gantry will be able to flip 90 degrees. So a patient will be able to comfortably walk up to the device or in a seated position, scan their upper extremity as well. So not only will this be a solution for lower extremity specialists, but also upper extremity specialists within an orthopedic practice. And lastly, we're designing a patient table that will be able to fit into the gantry so that not only will you be able to do standing weight-bearing scans and upper extremity scans, but also supine scans for trauma patients, for elderly patients, for those who are just not able to be mobile. And we see that there's potential application for this device in trauma settings, in orthopedic orthopedic urgent care settings, and in the emergency room. We're very excited for what's coming next. Curfeam is ecstatic to be one of the leaders and to be constantly pushing the boundaries and creating new frontiers in orthopedic imaging. Here's to rising high, the sky is the limit. Thank you so much.